Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. This is my son Ben. And today we have a short uh, <laughs> tasting video and FAQ. Yeah, we're gonna ask if you have a, a AMA. It's now called an AMA. It's, it's, it's not frequently questions, but sometimes there's always that question coming up but uh AMA, but about whiskey about whiskey so ask me anything about whiskey <laughs> so yeah and what we're having today is a tomatin 11 year old and it's a final maturation it's a finish in masala wine cask but um it's a finish that has been matured a bit longer in these masala wine cars because they have been put in these masala wine cars in 2017 so that's about yeah, three, three years, years now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and what's marsala marsala is a uh, an italian wine from the island of sicily this big triangular shaped island in the south of the of italy and uh, there you have uh, a small, no, a medium-sized town in the very west of Sicily called Masala. And they grow wine there since the Romans or even before Carthago. Uh, yeah. And the Greek probably. Greek, yeah. Yeah, they have uh, uh, a lot of Greek culture there. And... Uh, in the 18th century, around 1700 something, uh, the Italians uh, started to ship Marsala to, to Britain and uh, to have that wine stabilized for the longer journey, uh, they fortified it. So they took the wine, uh, distilled it to high proof and then added this spirit to the wine until it had about 20% and did not uh, went bad over a hot summer travel in a sail in a slow sail ship uh, to Britain, and uh, yeah, today the better Marsala wines aren't fortified. They have a normal, uh, uh, yeah, alcoholic volume. Uh, With normal, that's like. 14% yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there are still fortified wines from Masala, but they are not that present in, in the market. No. So, mm -hmm. and these wines are comparable uh, to sherry and port. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have, and, and why Tomatin? Well, Tomatin is a distillery owned by Japanese, a Japanese company, mm -hmm. and it had been the largest malt whiskey distillery in Scotland. So a really a big one. And they had two dozen pot stills, each with the size of 16,000 liters, I think. So Whoa. they were big. They were massive. An awful lot. Uh, if you have a look at our whiskey database on whiskey.com, there you can see pictures I took, I think, about the year 2004, 2005, you can see an endless row of, of pot stills, massive. But then uh, in 85, uh, in the big British recession, sales of whiskey dropped a lot. They moved to a blended whiskey, a lot of grain whiskey. So the malt whiskey stills uh, weren't uh, needed any longer. And uh, they reduced production, went down and down and down. And I think around the year 2003, 2004, uh, they started uh, or they moved over just to produce malt whiskey. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, most of the stills were silent or cold. And uh, today, I think they sold two thirds of those stills and got the copper price, which they were able to invest in cast after that but they still have i think six or eight stills where four of them are producing that's the actual thing i remember but i haven't been there for s several years so it's not the newest information i have mm -hmm. yeah i really have to to visit it it's somewhere northeast in the highlands northwest north north now, West? no, so no, uh, just Northeast. just on the west side of the space side. West side of the space, space side. side. So it's below Elgin then. 
uh, no, Belgium. Elgin is the center of the space side. Move a lot, a lot more to the west, uh, south of forest probably. South of forest. Oh, okay. And a little oh. bit up in the mountains, not at the coast. So they uh, are lying beautiful in the halfway to Loch. What was it, Loch the Desi thingy? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Loch Ness, yeah, Loch. No, 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 no. Loch Ness is uh, more north. More north. Okay. They are the. the but the, it's long, so. Not mm. that much to the uh, to the west. Yeah, we should have had a, a, a picture <laughs> of that. Okay. Why do we uh, taste this bottle? Because this is an exclusive to our company, mm -hmm. and uh, we looked up for. Uh, a bottle with a good maturation, not too old, but excellent casks, 46% uh, ABV, uncolored, unchill filtered, uh, with a good, gentle, well taste. taste. And uh, tomatin uh, uh, rhymes itself on satin. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know how to pronounce tomatin, uh, think about satin. Then it's tomato. Mm -hmm. That's the right pronunciation. And uh, so they call themselves, or they name their, themselves, uh, one of the smoothest and gentle uh, highland. The softer side of the highlands. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. And they have pretty high, tall pot stills, they say. Yeah, 16,000 liters. They are massive. Mm -hmm. So they are also high. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say that they are... Uh, Oh, the highest? No, definitely not. But probably they belong to the higher ones. Yeah. Um, we have one guy in the uh, production studio today, so I don't have to fiddle around with everything and I can pretty much relax. And we are saving all your questions here and we will answer them after a bit of a tasting. Yeah. So this is the second dram we have today. and. Today I've been a little bit more generous. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, there are times where you, you're able. Uh, so this year is the year I have more alcohol on my hands than on my liver. <laughs> <laughs> and I <laughs> can't go against that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you smell? We have one with this masala cast. You really find that cask influence in there. And it has a lot of red fruit. It's a really, it has grapes in it. It has a few berries in it. And it's uh, it's wonderfully gentle, but also it has a little bit of spices in there. And uh, yeah, I'm coming through as a total German now, but a little bit of a, a Glühwein taste. And uh, <laughs> Glühwein is like that Christmas wine. When you're on the Christmas market, spiced. there's a... Christ Christmas red wine. Red wine that is spiced and hot. I don't know if any country other than Germany or Austria drinks that, but on the Christmas market, you get hot wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and a, a headache. <laughs> and a headache. <laughs> and a poorly uh, clean <laughs> mug from it. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of herpes. Some herpes as well. <laughs> Don't drink that. No. If you come to Munich or Nuremberg, the famous Chris Kittle market, <laughs> don't drink that. <laughs> Bring your own mug. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's allowed good. today. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yes. It is. Okay. Yeah, Mold so wine. That's the one. Mold wine. Yeah. yeah. Forgot uh, the word. Thanks. So what Make do I have? <laughs> I have all the fruit, a strong massive fruitiness with a light citrus note behind some cloves mm. and from the cask as the sherry wine has some hazelnuts and in the back a beginning light light spiciness of the wood so i suggest the mm. the italians do not use american white oak for their masala wine casks but they use uh, yeah. Probably Italian wood from the Apennine somewhere. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's said that uh, tomato has a bit of a distillery character of nuttiness. 
not quite sure if it's that distillery character of nuttiness, <clears throat> but it um, definitely has a, a bit of nuttiness in it, maybe from the cask, maybe from, from the wine, but it has a lovely <coughs> wine flavor. So it's, yeah, grapes, a bit of berries in there as well. It's not very sweet. It's more of a satin, bit of oakiness. Um, but not yeah. a bitter oakiness. Yeah. A little bit of bitterness yeah. as well, but but no, uh, me. not but a, a bit of sweetness. I would not mm. sweetness, but uh, a mild bitterness. So I find uh, a little bit more of blood oranges, juicy blood oranges, mm. and uh, a little bit of of honey as well. Not the sweet side of the honey, but there's a definite honey note uh, if you remove the sweetness from honey, which is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's mouth filling. It's intense. So the cask have for three years they have a definite influence on that whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I what what I already know because you can see that there was a bit about double in the. Mm. About half of that, what we what's empty now, as we drank in the German take, and you half of that never it was like this before, and then yeah. yeah. So, but we had we had, we had a few few drums already, and what I love about this is this is not adding up to the bitterness, so it's no. not ending up as mm -hmm. a really oaky one. No. There are some of the whiskies that are really really oaky, and it's nice. I think the three years of that masala finish just gives the right oakiness to it. Yeah, and I suggest, or I think that before it had been a re refill cast something. Mm. Or, so I do not have that intense vanilla taste in it. Mm. So the the fruity and uh, cast size is, uh, better, is bigger. It's probably a re refill cask that didn't have much influence, and then they just. Kicked it up another notch with the masala cast. Yeah, for three years because six months mm -hmm. wouldn't have been enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What so, do you think about French whiskey from yeah. Jonathan Grayal? So Grail. I have an experience with French whiskies, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not really the French ones, but from Brittany. So they uh, are related uh, to Great Britain up there in Brittany. And uh, they produce quite an interesting whiskey, which is well comparable to a Scotch one, but they have some different notes in it, uh, most uh, coming from uh, the French Limousin casks. Mm. The, that's the Warenheng, the Amorique. Yeah, Amorique. Mm. Amorique is the brand and <coughs> the story calls Warenheng. I think I've tried them as well. They were quite good, but. French wine, uh, French whiskies are not really famous or there are not that many of them on the market. Mm -hmm. And there are probably a lot of small ones and there, there will be a lot of variation between the qualities mm -hmm. within the market. I, I suggest or I guess, just uh, like the German ones, there are a few good ones, but a lot of them There is a French whiskey from, from Corsica, Cors. Oh. The island, yeah, and there it's made of buckwheat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And there are uh, casks allowed in France which are not from oak. So I don't know how it's called. Uh, castagne, what's the English mm. word of it? Chestnut. Chestnut, yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Mm, chestnut, that, uh, that so would be chestnut interesting. casks, so there are different ones in France. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is your Constantinos Gavrilidis? What is your favorite PX cask whiskey? Please write whiskey with an H and without an E. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so which is my favorite PX? Uh, you have the Glen Allerkey, do you? The Glen Allerkey, yes, that was awesome as well. Um, wasn't there one? I like the Lagavulin yeah. uh, PX finish. No, the distiller's that's edition. The color. But and I would also say the Lagavulin <laughs> PX. <laughs> and there's a second one, uh, which is a mixture of Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez. And uh, that's the uh, Glendrona Parliament, 21 years old, mm -hmm. which is excellent. And these pigs, you know what this pig stands for? Pedro Jimenez, 
the real name is Peter Siemens. <laughs> Peter Siemens. But they are Peter is Peter, Peter and Siemens is the electric <laughs> Pedro, yeah. And uh, Siemens is the electric company. No, they are not. Yeah, they're not related. Related. Uh, it was uh, in the 18th century when this Peter Siemens came to uh, Pedro, Pedro Siemens, Siemens, Pedro Siemens. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful story. I think he was a, also a doctor. All the all the uh, spirits in the world that are famous were made by some doctors. Like I'm gonna do medicine, and also I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> It's good for me, and will be good for you. Yeah. Uh, we have someone uh, who gave us five Canadian dollars. Oh, but I don't, I don't think Lewis. he didn't leave a message. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Then there is Zurup. Saxena, what is your favorite whiskey? Please, without an E, it's the English. Yeah, whiskey of all time. And a why? whiskey. Whiskey. He asked for a whiskey of all time. And unfortunately, uh, whiskey is a journey. You move from one whiskey to another, mm -hmm. and you have a favorite from time to time, and that changes. Of all time. It's 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 hard to, to pick favorites. <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard to pick favorites. So I think so I had a whiskey uh, a video with my uh, famous most famous whiskeys uh, I like most, um, but they changed already a little bit. So mm -hmm. what I find extremely well was Johnny Walker blended whiskey King George the fifth. Mm -hmm. Extremely expensive and extremely good, but that it's not. Uh, uh, a single malt which is uh, well uh, selected from the best casks but that is artisanal craftsmanship where you put casks together and create something mm -hmm. so for me I'm not quite sure maybe Lagavulin 16 just because I began with it in such an iconic whiskey and it's such a great whiskey A whiskey, a uh, whiskey. Uh, <laughs> I think the one sitting there on, in, in the cupboard. The the Elijah Craig. Mm. Elijah Craig, 18 years. It's awesome as well. Yes. Um, I would have said George Dickel, but this is the only whiskey distillery over in the States that says whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because no, Maker's Mark is the, the second uh, one. Do they have as well? Yeah. Oh, okay, uh -huh. second one. Yeah, they only have a few ones that go whiskey. But yeah, it's, it's a really hard uh, whiskey uh, uh, question to answer. Are they really... Ex are they... Are The, the really expensive whiskey wines worth the price or is it more for collection? Depends on how much uh, money is worth to you. <laughs> <laughs> If you're really short on money and you have to, uh, yeah, I don't know, turn down the thermostat to uh, be able to afford the whiskey, then... It's probably not worth it. But if you're a billionaire and you buy yourself a bottle of $2,000 worth of whiskey or euros worth of whiskey and that's nothing to you, then yeah, it is. So definitely a 2,000 euro whiskey is better than 200. But uh, the increase is not proportional. Yeah, there's always the rule <laughs> of, of less gain with rising prices. Yeah. Yeah. So a whiskey twice the money will be maximum 20% or 40% better. Yeah. Uh, so, no. Yes, no. So, from, from my point of view, if you go in with, I don't know, 30, 40, maybe sometimes 50 euros, you'll get pretty good whiskies. And if you're looking for the maximum, I would say 70 to 100, and then mm -hmm. you really have an outstanding piece. Yeah. And up there... It's most often it's the rareness of the piece. Yeah, there are a lot of whiskies that get more expensive with the uh, rarity. Yeah. Ben, have you bought the RTX 3, 380, uh, 3080 yet? Uh, I'm actually, I, I pretty much quit the editing, so mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's no reason for me to buy it anymore. <laughs> so I, I have still my... Uh, 1070 Ti. 1070 Ti. Yeah. 
No, I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we have in the company a, a 2060, 2070, 20, probably. Something, 2060, yeah. 2070. And with the, we are now, we switched from Adobe to uh, the Da Vinci Resolve, and uh, that's much faster. <laughs> yeah. And because a lot of people uh, started to cut with that program, learned with that, they didn't have to convert because. For me, it's a bit of a hustle because I, I really got into that Adobe thing and the DaVinci Resolve is a bit different. I'm still with the Adobe. Hey, he's still with the Adobe. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you drink whiskey every day? Definitely no. 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 Uh, what you have to do is you have to be careful with your, well, <laughs> with your liver or with your body in, in total. So I decided for myself to consume only half the amount of the average consumption in our country of alcohol per captiva. Mm -hmm. So mm. I stay to half of that. So the uh, statistics would be uh, so that I'm not very, uh, how to tell, uh, that I might not get ill from that because I... Uh, if you're drinking more than the average, then the chances that you're getting ill from alcohol is quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the media uh, has the normal lifespan, but if you're going below that, you should be have a, a longer lifetime. So I stay uh, probably with half of the alcohol intake. So that's for me, no beer, no alcohol to any meal. So. That's it what I'm doing and uh, I have no need for more alcohol because uh, my work is tasting whiskeys twice a week. Yep. Uh, so that's enough for me. Um, and every day this may lead you to addiction and that's not good. Yeah. No? So I'm pretty much uh, having the whiskey I'm trying here a few whiskies that I have to taste because of uh, sampling and also with friends. Sampling is most smelling. Yeah. And at least if you had enough, uh, you can spit it out during sampling. I, I usually drink it as well, mm. just because I don't like the spitting. But yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and I have a bit of whiskey or a bit of uh, beer with my friends. But uh, I don't drink uh, one in the evening, a beer in the evening or anything else in the evening alcoholic because I just don't want to get in the habit of it yeah if you if you uh, force yourself to enjoy whiskey with friends it's also more fun and mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's that's a good thing and the most important thing is don't get into habit as you said when you come home after work and first have a drink mm -hmm. then you always have to have a drink coming from work or if you're in a bad mood and say, well, I'm in a bad mood. Mm. My boss was so, well, yeah. So I have to have a drink. And then you, your, your body and your brain says, oh, well, I have to have more of that because I always feel bad when I'm coming home from work. Mm. And then there's a tombstone spiral. Uh, so you should uh, give you a whiskey when everything was good in a day. So to have a positive enforcement, mm -hmm. that's the right way to, to consume alcohol. Not for, for sometimes you can't drink enough for the worst is going on around you. So don't try. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hi there guys. What do you think of the 18 year old expression of Tometin? Very good. Did not care for the 12, but wanted to give the 18 a try. Thanks. We had it. I think it's already on, on video. So many we had. <laughs> or probably it's not. It's in the schedule. So if you don't find it on the channel, then it might come up very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful drum as well. Mm -hmm. What part of Scotland, Scotland produces the best whiskey? Like Isla, because of the peaty, smoky this flavor? Sour up Saxena, he huh? writes a lot. Questions. Yeah. Mm. And that's that really, the, the problem is it's, uh, it depends on your taste. If you like the smoky, and yeah, it's Isla. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> if you like the the uh, 
the fruitiness and the uh, sweetness and the gentleness than uh, maybe Highlands or Speyside for you. And yeah, so the different regions have different styles, but they are always outliers. There are a few non-smoky whiskies on the uh, Isle of Island, uh, Isle of Isla, and there are a few smoky ones in the Highlands as well. <laughs> and how many <clears throat> distilleries have you traveled in Scotland and which one did you like the most? So I had uh, in total 185 distilleries worldwide. Mm -hmm. And in Scotland, probably 110 with the old gone mothballed or where only remnants are left over. Uh, and which I like most? Well, the ones who let me in. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a lot of alike. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm not quite sure how many distilleries I've been to yet. I've counted... 50? 50? No, more. Yeah, you have all those Japan and, and I had and I had eight in Isla. I had 18 in America. I mm. had 11 in Japan. And I would say about 50 in, in Scotland now. And about three yeah. in Ireland. Depends on how much how you define visiting a distillery. If if I take all the distilleries, I just parked with Horst at the street, and then we took a bit of a drone footage and a few photos. <laughs> then I would probably go over uh, 120 or 140 now. But uh, mm -hmm. if if I go in, see all the processes, talk, take an interview, make a whole video about it, then I'm I would say at 80 or something like that. Yeah. I've been pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like that because I do not have to travel that much. What's the difference between GD Sinatra Select and Century? Ah, no What's idea. the Century? Uh, uh, the GD Sinatra Select was the Jack Daniels. GD is for Jack Daniels. Uh, Sinatra well, Select they, is they, the one where with the cuts in the they had a the spiral or, or uh, what's it called uh, nude. Uh, a little little deeper cut into the the what do you call it, the cask so you have a little a rake in it it looks like a rake so you have more of a surface area and that has a better maturation or a stronger maturation faster maturation but i'm not quite sure how the century was defined i've, I've I never had remember the, the century I, I don't remember it i think it's it's very similar to the sinatra select probably the same but sorry, you can't answer. I only know the Sinatra Select, and I think I had it on on the on the channel here a few years ago. Rope Lutjena. No, that was you. Could you review some bottles from Compass Box in the future? They make high quality blended malt bottlings. Well, I had Compass Box whiskies in the past, some 10, 15 years ago, and I as well uh, talked to the former proprietor, and unfortunately. Well, he's doing a good blending work, yes, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, uh, the result was very expensive, very expensive. So we did not uh, give them uh, more than one a, a chance uh, for selling the whiskey of them because we found that the prices were too high for our customers. Mm. Today, uh, the company was sold, I think, to Diageo, and uh, I'm not aware if the prices have changed. So I'm not willing to to pay that high prices for that blending process. Mm. So that's my personal feeling to that. Matt Navarro, I res recently started getting into new Scotch distilleries. Would you say that Brunner Haven 12 is a good place to start for a less refined palate? Uh, new less Scotch refined. distillery, new for you. <laughs> Brunner Haven is 200 years old. No, not that long, over 100 years old. Uh, Brunner Haven 12 is a special whiskey because it's an Isla whiskey. And uh, it's a typically non-peated whiskey. So this is quite untypical for a start. I think the 12 year old with a 46.3 ABV is a excellent whiskey, very strong, massive, uh, but it's not a, a start where I would say 
uh, well, that's a whiskey where you can build on and compare to others. No, this whiskey is is different to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pure se pure sense UK thirty five or something like that. Horst and Ben, what do you think about people who refuse to drink NAS whiskies? Is there uh, uh, as there is no age statement. I think they're missing out on some real gems by being so stubborn. Yes, it's a bit of a stubbornness. I have to say, if you don't write an age statement onto the bottle, it's missing out. Um, there's, an, there's a bottle over there, the new Artbeck Wee Beastie. It's a five-year-old. and It's not an ass. It's not an ass. And people reacted pretty good to it. Um, so I can understand why these people are, uh, are fed up with um, the companies bringing out NAS whiskeys and not putting an age statement and not saying, hey, that's a young whiskey. Uh, we, could, but, uh, we could take a video, a vice versus video. NAS where, versus where, not NAS. <laughs> where, where you agree for NAS or not, whatever you like, and <laughs> I take the other part. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could do that, yeah. 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 Um, so I can see both sides of the argument. Um, from a selfish point of view, I also wouldn't be so stubborn because uh, I want to have these gems. Yes. So I totally agree with you from a selfish point of view. If some people refuse to do it, so be it. There will be, no le uh, be less NAS whiskeys uh, on the market. But uh, uh, I can go with them because uh, in the start they took whiskeys into the bottles which was was very young and not that well matured. Mm -hmm. So there had been bad NAS whiskies out there. But with the time and the uh, upcoming of better casks from uh, uh, wineries uh, all around the world, uh, the cask quality became a lot better and the NAS whiskies got better as well. And uh, you have to change your production procedure Uh, so that there are not so many faints in the whiskey that the young whiskey tastes have this metallic taste. So having a NAS whiskey from a triple distillation is no problem at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a it's a it's a real discussion uh, on NAS and not NAS whiskies, and I would say I think they will be around all the time the NAS whiskies. But I also think we will not lose the age statement whiskies. So, yeah, try them, don't try them. I would recommend everybody, if you think you might get a bad bottle or have, I don't know, a feeling about that, read up on the internet. There's There are reviews everywhere about pretty much every bottle. And after you've seen two or three reviews, you pretty much uh, know what you're getting. We on whiskey.com have a database with a lot of reviews of bottles. You might mm. find them. Um, Horst, your favorite or Krauser Marco, uh, the new club bottle is better to drink or to collect this one, he means. Uh, well, I think it's better to drink <laughs> <laughs> because there will be a lot of other bottles, uh, finished bottles from Tomatin on the market and the price will not be that high uh, The potential for price rises are not that high, so better to drink it. Yeah, and if everybody drinks it, then the other ones have a <laughs> higher <laughs> price for that. Yeah, I think <laughs> if you want to make really a uh, distinctive increase in price, you'd have to put it in your basement for at least 20 years. Mm, yeah. So, Mike FX, Horst, your favorite between Glendronach 18 and 21. Well, that's a definite problem. Uh, I decided myself between the 15-year-old and the 18-year-old and I decided for the 18-year-old because it's so smooth. And uh, the 21-year-old is even smoother but has a lot of more cast influence uh, than the 18-year-old. So I like the 21-year-old very, very much and I can't decide which of those two are, is better. So if you have to look a little bit after your money then the 18-year-old is, is really good. And the 21-year-old is different, but as well, very good. Mm -hmm. Has Horst tried the old Granary Grain Whiskey yet? No. No, it's <laughs> still... I think it's within reach of you. 
<laughs> there it is. Um, and yeah, the glasses are a bit further away. Um, yeah, Glen Scotia, the best quality to price ratio right now. What else would you add? Oh, that's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, oh, I, I got one with a with a color stripe on it. <laughs> I think it's not colored, so you can actually talk about it. Yeah. A so to, to say, ratio. First, mm -hmm. this is a blended grain whiskey, mm -hmm. isn't it? And it's uh, 1973, and ha has 46 years uh, as an age count. Mm -hmm. And 50% ABV. 50%. And this smells uh, like a bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, question. One of my favorite whiskey was the Dark Origins from Highland Park because it had a scent smoke that reminded me of something like shoe polish. Is there a whiskey with a similar nose? Well, hmm. Shoe polish. We had a, lady, we had a, we had a one. We had a, 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 a newsletter about that. Yeah. New, uh, shoe polish in whiskey. How, so how, how if do you know going to, to whiskey.com? Then uh, you can uh, uh, put your email address uh, for a newsletter, and we've you have to register for the forum, and there you can get, uh, register for the newsletter. Yeah. Otherwise, you will not find it. Yeah. <laughs> we have to change that. Um, yeah, shoe polish. There, there was one question of a guy who said, "How do you know a taste of shoe polish? Have you ever eaten shoe polish?" No, but um, smell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have these exclusive, like a leather chair, nobody has eaten a leather chair yeah, as well. Or no. eaten shoe polish, <laughs> but it's um, how you translate the flavor in your nose to what you you would feel in your mouth. So yeah, so that's that's what what they do, and we have talked about different flavors in whiskey as well, and where they come from. So this one is from. I'm really unable to to answer the Glen Scotia one right now. But I had I had tons of good whiskies that I recommended for for quality ratio to price, but I can't think of the top of my head for for one right now. Sorry. <laughs> so this is from Meadowside Blending. And the cool thing is what I just saw right now that this is a grain whiskey and it's from. Malt man. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw and seen that right now. It has has malt man uh, cast yeah, into label. the glass in the back. <laughs> this is a grain whiskey from malt man. <laughs> ah, thanks for all the great videos. What is your view between Glen Ronach and Glen Alki? Any preferences? Well, there is a history in that. Um, Glendronach was owned by Allied Distillers and was then sold in the year 2000 to a consortium of South African a couple, a South African couple. I sat with them together in Blair Castle at the uh, Keeper of the Pride ceremony. And uh, the Scottish guy is, how is his name? Um, not Jim. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Billy Walker. Billy Walker. That's it. <laughs> Alexander Walker is his son, or it, It's on that Glen Allen key. I've just read it. Yeah. So Billy Walker, and uh, he sat at our table as well. And on that day, they underwrote the selling of Glendronach and Ben Riach, mm. and they didn't sell. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought about well, there's the, the Africans here and South Africans here, and Billy Walker is here. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, well, probably the yearly visit of the investors. No, they sold it uh, to an American company from Foreman. And then Billy Walker moved on to Glen Allake. And he moved Glen Allake uh, out of the blending business supplier uh, to a malt whiskey distillery. And so there will be the same... Uh, footprint of him in this whiskey distillery as well yeah so he's, he's always a guy who who looks at the spirit uh, doesn't buy any distillery that has a bad spirit and 
uh, then goes on to his connections, buys very good cars, does cask finishes, a lot of PX, Oloroso, and Masala, and what else? Yeah, Masala, um, and a lot of other and wine first, casks. First is now uh, finishing because they just took over. Oh, that's mine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, finishing because they just owned the distillery for some years yep. now. Uh, so oldest whiskey ever I tried, tried which, which were, were I gave you one. Uh, we it's had that that package of really really old whiskeys yeah, from Gordon McPhail. For more Gordon McPhail's, I think there was a sixty or fifty nine year old in yes. there. Yes, yes, it was. Um, not quite sure how the video. Uh, what the name of the video is if you want to look it up but there's also that video of the black boma from you which is 56 or is it no 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 42 42 oh okay okay then probably these gordon mcphail's with 60 years old uh it was a i think it was a glenn grant wasn't glenn it? grant yeah. yeah they are really old um but this year is also way up there. If you have a 46, a 46 year old, then it's way up there. I had several above 40 or 45. Uh, and I still have, we have to take that video soon, uh, some really rare bottlings from Gordon McPhail sent to me, some smaller samples. <laughs> so probably we can only take that video in one language. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the English language is, uh, uh, channel is now uh, stronger than the German one. Yes, in terms of view, it's sometimes lagging a bit, but uh, <laughs> in terms of subscribers, we are actually going towards the 100,000 subscribers and we'll probably get a silver play button. You already have one silver play I button. I know my German not whiskey channel. Mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, I have, that. <laughs> have not had a, uh, a silver play button <laughs> yet, but um, I'm working hard on that. So I'm, yeah. I'm what I'm proud in in this channel is I'm really proud of the distillery videos because they are they're becoming really good in quality and uh, they are yeah nobody does that really. There are some distillery videos, but uh, there's not a really good collection of distillery videos. So I'm definitely a malt whiskey man. This grain. Not yours? Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty good. Okay, Ben, will you be doing uh, any distillery tour videos anytime soon? Yes, this year I have not done anything yet and we had to suffer for it in the calendar. Usually we have uh, do two tours and then we take the best photos from these tours and put it in the calendar and yeah, we didn't have any this year. So um, I have planned a tour <laughs> to two days or three days switzerland with two destinations so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i love your distilleries thank you very much yeah there will be two coming up this year <laughs> and hopefully next year there will be a full tours again could you do any possible Octomar reviews in the future together? Oh. Uh, so this would be a uh, a video Where versus my video. <laughs> <laughs> there are tomorrow's behind horse. <laughs> no, not mine. <laughs> so I, I decided not to have the Octomar and give it completely to you. Hmm. So you're giving a, a more neutral. Yeah. Uh, we could do a. About we that. could do a. Ochentoschen three wood against uh, Octomor as <laughs> ten point five or something. No refill, <laughs> refill Hogshead. Ochentoschen refill Hogshead versus. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we'll see a Scotch matured or finished in tequila barrels soon? Uh, I heard about tequila barrels. Yeah, there was one guy who said told me that as well. But um, who is really experimenting with um, casks? Where would probably most likely to see that is Glenmorey. They have a lot of casks in their in their warehouses, and actually they have uh, casks they shouldn't have that they can't fill to call it a Scotch whiskey um, because it's I think not uh, freed okay. yet. In the regulation, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but I'm but not sure if, if I was there before they uh, loosened the regulation or after they loosened the regulation. Because they re re loosened the regulation, I think, 2019. Mm -hmm. 
Not quite sure when I was there. And they have a herrings cask. Uh, no, no, not herring cask. But they tequila had tequila. Ca- yeah, not tequila. They Tabasco had some cask. No, Tabasco. <laughs> I, there was one. There, there was that that uh, George Stickel with the Tabasco cask. Mm-hmm. I had been. I had a video tour last month. Yeah, coming up soon. Oh yeah, uh, yeah there was one one <laughs> distillery video from Hawthorne. Yeah, uh, so uh, it's a it's a Danish whiskey distillery. And they are experimenting with cask as well. Mm-hmm. And they have cask there lying around. Incredible names. You, you can't believe that, what they have. And they will make a point in, in different casks. So it's the Stowning Distillery. And, uh, well, look on this channel and uh, <laughs> be surprised then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michael Borovu. Bo- uh, what kind of currency is that? Twenty three. Polish. Point ninety nine. Do they not have the slotty? Year? Slotty. Polish slotty. Oh, but the end. P L N. Thank you for all priceless reviews that help me making whiskey choices. They always match my recep- reception afterwards. Yeah. Thank you very much for the twenty nine, uh, twenty three ninety nine, whatever, <laughs> and yeah, uh, have fun with your whiskey. Uh, I really like P- it. PLN is slotty, is Paul. Normalerweise kommt er wieder. Okay, kommt wieder. Schau mal auf YouTube. Kannst weiter machen was? Yeah, so we had a short cut in the stream. I hope YouTube will be able to uh, mm-hmm. to add that mm-hmm. to the stream again. And uh, yes, I had the Danish Stowning whiskey, and there are three new bottles uh, appeared last week on Monday, uh, and I will have a, a video of them uh, in the upcoming weeks, definitely before Christmas. So uh, we will have, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, these outstanding whiskey, outstanding in terms of number of, of pot stills. They have 24 pot stills there, but they are small, mm-hmm. very small, 2,000 liters each. Uh, intense whiskey is a, is a result. Yeah, well, I had it. <laughs> we'll mm-hmm. see the results soon. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so we're running out of time. We're getting to the end, will we mm-hmm. take one or two uh, questions? Glenlivet 18 is now 40% ABV. What do you think about that? I thought that it always have been 40%. Was it 43? I don't have it here. Mm, no idea. Probably they had 43. Mm. Typically, 40% is for the mass market. Yeah. And people do not honor 43%. Yeah. Uh, inside the UK, 43% always have been uh, this little bit of kick extra, which but people are honored. But but outside the UK, it wasn't didn't matter. Yeah. So if but they it's they went live at 18, not the the 18. The, yeah. Yeah, but the 18. It's an excellent whiskey. One of my very very yeah. favorite ones. Mm-hmm. But I do not remember if it had 40 or 43. Mm-hmm. Probably uh, the 40 and 43 had been from different countries or uh, there is a liter bottle from the travel value probably that had the 43 Mm percent no idea Uh, hello are there any really good smoky whiskies for around 20 pounds on the market blends or otherwise yes um i like the is it the 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 big Pete and I like really like the big Pete. Yes, I had one for nineteen ninety nine. Is there a, a, is that under twenty? Not quite sure. And, and he's asked about pounds, so I'm not quite sure in your market if it's below that critical Ta- taxes mark. Taxes are high. Alcohol taxes. Yeah, in the probably UK it's a bit bit high. higher. But I'm not quite sure. Is there any really cheap smoky whiskey under twenty? Finn in Lag- our country, Finn yes, Lagen? but in Great Britain, they have uh, more than twice, triple the, the taxes. Yeah. Uh, no chance so for that, I think. 20 pounds is a really, a really tough price for, for yeah. a good smoky whiskey. So uh, I like the, the Big Pete. 
I had some other uh, nice no-name Isla whiskies, and they were also pretty good, but none that really stood out that much. So yeah, Big Pete, Pete's <laughs> Beast was also not that bad. Yeah. Elke Brawler. So here's the big question: Best Isla? Yeah, uh, like a bull in sixty. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Really? For me, it's like a bull in PX. PX. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's for me the best one. Yeah, it depends on if you're really into that Isla. I I do like my my Octomore as well. So I do like it as well. It's pretty good. Were you ever contacted by the Whiskey Tribe for joining the the Bastards Ball? Ba Bastard Bastards Ball? No idea. Sorry, I, I think the Whiskey Tribe is a YouTube channel. I have to say, uh, unfortunately, I don't watch many other whiskey YouTubers. I I do have to look up whiskeys every day and do uh, write my scripts and check new bottles and that kind of stuff and sorry i'm not watching the other youtube whiskey youtubers i do watch uh, a lot of a lot of law youtube or not i have one german law youtuber it's just my daily update for what's happening no that's not interesting next one uh i watch watch him regularly and <coughs> some a bit of news and uh some other but unfortunately not the other whiskey youtubers so derek mc Avoy, do you ever have cigars and whiskey? Never. So not to say never, I was invited to a cigar club and I had uh, some, how do you call that? Cigar? Intakes. Puffs? Uh, puffs, puffs <laughs> is the right word. Uh, or a cigar and it was awful it was disturbing all your taste buds paralyzing everything into your mouth and your nose so smoking and whiskey does not go at all that's my personal opinion i so, think i think smoking no and whiskey goes for some people but the thing is we are pretty non-smokers we are just non-smokers for like all the way we just we're just not smokers. That no. that's the problem. Yeah. If you are into smoking, then and cigars, that's that's then it's your thing. And yeah. go ahead. And I think there are a lot of people who who like to combine it. It's just not our thing. Yeah. The the main problem is, uh, if you're a smoker, your tasting buds are paralyzed always. Uh, so you're tasting thirty percent less, and a good chef always adds more spices if the waiter tells him uh, he's a smoker the guest is a smoker and then he said okay he needs a little bit more uh, so uh, it is difficult uh, to find out the real taste of the whiskey because you always have the real taste of cigars so and you only have to have sorry to tell that way one god <laughs> either, the, either the cigar or the whiskey if you combine both, then you, you are the craftsman, you are the blender, you are the combiner. And uh, so you are responsible for the result you're getting out of those two things. Mm. The, the, my question is, I I'm really have no idea about cigars. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm total noob for that. But my question for that would be, if you look at the, uh, the cigar business, and you compare the cigar business with the whiskey business, then you would have the supermarket whiskey or the one that you get at the gas station, the, the really cheap one, no name vodka, would be the cigarette, and the single malt <laughs> would be the good uh, hand-rolled, I don't know, Cuban cigar with the morning blend picked uh, tobacco <laughs> or something. I don't know what's going on in that business. And... Uh, <laughs> If you are really a cigar guy, do you do you like like Arnold Schwarzenegger have a cigar every day, or is that like, oh, this weekend I'm gonna have a cigar, or how is that cigar business? Because I would say no if idea. you if you drink a vodka every day, then you have a problem. Like uh, if you smoke every day, you have a problem. Yes. Uh, so is there a similarity, or is smoking uh, affecting you stronger or faster? I don't know, but. That, 
but you'd have to be an expert for both to, to know that. Or Rope uh, Lötjenen, any chance for a tour of Finnish distilleries, Helsinki Distillery. We planned to go to Finland this year, mm -hmm. <coughs> but we just made it to, to Sweden uh, because Finland then closed the borders for Germany. Nah. So there was no chance to go to Finland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, should yeah. we wrap it up? We should wrap it up, yeah. So it was, was <coughs> lovely questions today. Yeah, very and, good. Uh, like lovely audience. Really, thank you very much for uh, asking all the nice questions. Um, keep being posted because next week we're going to have a regions tasting. It's all going to be about the regions of the lowlands. And it's going to be an Ockentoshan, a Blatnock, and a 1770 a Glasgow and that's a new distillery. Yeah, it's a new distillery <coughs> in Glasgow. And we're going to tell you about what makes the region unique and everything. So it's going to be same time. Uh, it's also going to be Friday, same place, whiskey.com slash live or on the YouTube channel. And yeah, just keep being subscribed and you will get notified. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.